Welcome to another week of What's for Dinner. Tonight we are having some pasta and a pizza bagel. So I needed to use some pasta sauce. I forgot to film the meal um, a couple days ago. I had made spaghetti and meat sauce, had extra meat sauce. So we went ahead and I made some corkscrew pasta this time, put the meat sauce in it. I do not want that to go to waste. And then I had some pizza bagels. They needed to be used, so I split those, put pizza sauce and all the usual pizza toppings, put them in the oven, and so we're having pizza and pasta. Anybody want some carbs tonight? Apparently we do. So this is what we're having for dinner tonight. This is a very quick meal, and I'm sure it's gonna be tasty. All right, for tonight's dinner, I am making a big pot of chili. I have various kinds of tomatoes, seasoned and plain. I have some chili beans, let's see, yellow pepper, um, onion, garlic, and some salt. That's all I have in here right now. I'm getting ready to add my seasonings and whatnot, but I wanted to show you one thing. Um, I wanted to show you, if you never frozen peppers, you can. So these are from our garden last year um, and basically I just pick them wash them or you know uh, wipe them down throw them in a bag throw them in the freezer and they are perfect whatever you need them for whenever you need them and I think I'm down to this bag and one other one out in my barn freezer so I'm getting ready to take out maybe one jalapeno maybe one of these um, I'm not sure if these, I think these are maybe just banana peppers. They look a little different than banana. Chop those up and put them in my chili. Just wanted to give you that tip. You can even buy them at the grocery store, throw them in the freezer, and you have them when you need them. Okay guys, here is what we are gonna have tonight. Um, it's Sunday evening, and I'm gonna put this bacon in the oven. Now, I've never done turkey bacon in the oven before but I'm not gonna know how it works unless I give it a try. So we're gonna stick it in there. Um, I do regular bacon in the oven all the time. Squish it on there as close as you can get it and it shrinks up and um, so I just pile on there as much as I can. Stick it in the oven ba basically, I don't know, 400, 425 and then maybe about 15 minutes. You kind of know your oven, kind of watch it. Um, I do it a lot so I'm familiar with just about the time frame I need. And then the turkey bacon, I'm just gonna watch it. And I think it'll be done a little sooner. And so we are going to have bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches. I'm doing so much because both of these packages needed to be used. I don't want them to waste. They've both already been opened. And you know, if I wait much longer, I'm gonna get in there and they're not gonna be any good. So I'm gonna bake it all up. And we'll have it in the refrigerator for the next couple mornings. We can have a breakfast kind of made easy by having the bacon already done. And then we have this delicious loaf of bread that one of the sweet girls at our church baked and brought to James today. So we're going to slice that up and have bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches for Sunday night. And here is our delicious BLT on our homemade bread. I have a BLTO, so bacon, lettuce, tomato, and onion. I guess M because I like Miracle Whip on mine. This turned out delicious. We love having these. Well, hi there. Good afternoon and happy Saturday. I'm getting ready to put together some Chewy's creamy jalapeno cilantro dip and dressing. It's a copycat recipe from the Chewy's Mexican restaurant. And so I thought I would just pull out the camera and film this. It is so, so delicious. Now, if you look online on Pinterest and otherwise, there are hundreds of different copycat recipes. So these ingredients can vary um, from one Pinterest to another, to one blog to another. I have made this a few different times and each time I may tweak it a little bit. Overall you're getting um, a pretty similar taste. So you can tweak it to your own preferences. We like ours a little bit thinner, kind of like the, the actual dip at Chewy's. So, um, that's something that I always make sure I want to get right. But here are your ingredients. The full recipe will be in the description box below. But you're going to need, the star of the show of course is your cilantro. So you're going to need cilantro, one package of dry ranch, a little can of the green chilies, one lime, some pickled jalapeno slices is what most recipes call for but I have used fresh. 
light sour cream, doesn't have to be light, mayonnaise, and milk or buttermilk. Um, I rarely have buttermilk, so I usually use milk. So like I said, it can be kind of loosey-goosey on some of this. You can follow a recipe, one that suits your taste the best, and then you can kind of tweak it, taste it, and see what you think it needs. So I'm gonna get started putting this together. Like I said, the full description of the recipe I'm following will be below. This is so, so simple. Basically, you put all these things together in your blender, and there you have it. So I am going to get this going, and I'll show you as I go along. All right, guys, you can see that I have everything in my blender. And the only thing I have added in is the milk. I'm gonna wait to the end and make sure if I need it. And I'm going to put the star of the show in there now. And that is my delicious, fresh cilantro. So there we go. Yummy, delicious cilantro. All right, I've added in a little bit more cilantro and a few more jalapenos. I think I want just a little bit more spice on it and we're gonna give it a whirl. All right, this looks really good. That's about the consistency that I like it. I don't want it real thick or real thin. I haven't added any milk. Let me give this a taste. Oh my goodness. It is absolutely perfect. You can put this on any type of Mexican dish that you want. You can dip your chips in it. I don't know. You can just eat it out of the spoon if you want to. It's that good. So I hope you give this delicious dip a try. I think you will love it. And leave me a comment below if you do. Let me know what you think about it. I am making a pecan kringle. And doesn't that look amazing? So what we have here is butter, pecans, and brown sugar. And I'm just mixing those up really well together. And then you just use a refrigerated pie crust. And you're gonna put your pecan mixture on one half, fold it, crimp it, bake it, and then put some um, drizzle like a uh, confectioner's sugar drizzle on top. It's a pecan kringle. Have you ever seen those kringles at Trader Joe's? Uh, we sampled them one time and I didn't buy it because I knew it would be dangerous to have in the house. But I'm making this tonight for family night. And I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. And you definitely need to go over check out this recipe on Catherine's plate. That's where I saw it. And I'm telling you, I think it's going to be delicious. I have my mixture on my pie dough, and I'm going to fold it over. And she said to leave a little space here. Um, actually, I'm going to wet this with my little pastry brush, and I'm going to fold it over and crimp it. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like at this stage. All right, so I got the edges wet, folded it over, crimped it down with a fork, and put three vent holes there on the top. And now I'm going to stick it in the oven and let it bake. Definitely give this recipe a try. It's easy and a winner. Everyone here loved it. It's filled with pecan and brown sugary goodness. What is not to like about that? I also want to say thanks to Catherine's Plate for sharing this delicious recipe. And to all of you for watching this What's for Dinner video. See you the next time.